so here we are today and what I'm going to do today is just use a single box of Sennelia pastels. So let's just open those up and see what we've got inside. So it's a travel box uh, and it's got a really good selection of colours. You can see in the bottom row there are four different set rows and two at the top and they've got a really nice range of colours and you could use this for most subjects. It's got enough muted colours here and here, the earth colours, it's got some that you could use for the sea, some for the the sky and some ones you can use for grayed off clouds and a couple of quite good darks in there as well. So it's a really good little selection and you can see that these are half sticks so they're not uh, as big as the normal ones, they're half the size of a normal scenario and they're great because they already come with the papers off you don't have to break them to get them to the right length to work effectively with some people might um, worry about breaking their expensive pastels because this is are expensive but what you need to do is get them to a manageable size and I'll probably be breaking these down you can see in this section I've already broken that one in half just because they're easier to work with having shorter uh, lengths you want a, a number of different lengths just as if you were using brush strokes here I have two charcoal pencils I often get asked how I sketch up I often just sketch up with just a charcoal pencil I've got a black one and a white one depending on what background I've got and what subject I'm sketching up and what colours I'll be putting over the top and if I'm not using those then I often just use a Conte uh, pastel stick because they've got some nice sharp edges and they're easy to use as a sketch up tool. For inspiration today I'm just taking these two little photos they're just photos of uh, beach path, neither of them are exactly what I want. I, I quite like the silhouette of the tree here. Um, I like seeing some of the shadow on the path. This one's mostly in shadow, so I'll just be incorporating various as, uh, aspects of both of those into sort of an imaginary amalgamated scene of a beach path leading down to the sea and a little bit of uh, uh, a cloudy summer sky there. Now the paper I'm using today, it's just a piece of foam core painted with an aubergine uh, primer. It's just a colour fix primer. This one is a clear one. You paint that on and it just comes out clear. You can either mix paint with it before you paint it on or pigments to make it whatever colour you like or you can buy them in different colours and this is one I actually bought which is an aubergine one. And I've just rolled it onto the paper. You can see more about paper if you just click here. Okay, sketching up phase. I'm just going to give myself a little horizon line back here and make it about a third of the way down. Not worrying about it being too straight. At this stage later on I might use a, a ruler just to get it exactly straight. Nothing worse than framing up and finding that jaw that, that is just wrong. I'm going to just not even bother, well maybe slightly, putting a little bit of a suggestion of some a distant shore there and then I just want to indicate where the the path's going to go so it's going to sort of come over and, and down like that and then uh, maybe actually over a bit more and down so the path is going to start around about there and have a this sort of a, a leading bit of a twist in the path there to help lead the eye in so that's my general design. Not really putting much more in there, I'm not going to worry about the tree um, as yet, I'm just going to put those various uh, markers for me and that's my horizon line there. Okay so what I want to do now, actually I might put just one little indication here of where the, the beach is sort of going to sound is going to be and that's just going to be the, the waves there. Okay starting with the sky as usual. Um, for this one I'm just going to use what I've got in this box so I'll have to be careful about it but I want to start off by just giving a little bit of a warm glow to the sky down on the horizon here. So I'm going to just swipe it across here in a yellow pale sort of yellow colour. 
you can see this is quite gritty it's a little bit irregular because I've pasted it on myself but it gives you a bit of a bit there so if you, you need to just give that first one a little bit of a smush into the paper with your finger across like so and now I'm just going to look for some paler blue so I've got paler blue here and that's just going straight across the top of that now, I think I might talk about a different sky than I usually do here. So one way you can do sky, skies is as I'm doing here. So I'll just take that right up to the top. Um, and I don't have a really full range of blues here. So this one's way too blue for what I want. But what I'm going to do is just gently bring it down. And then I'm going to take that very light pale blue and bring it up over there. So I can moderate that. Now what you can do if you want to get your sky you can see that's quite a lively sky but if you want to make your sky a little bit more lively you can actually start taking these colors and giving them some diagonal strokes here just to get a bit of a uh, rhythm going in your sky and not just be a, a soft blurred sort of sky so what I'm doing is just stroking the pastel with the very tip of the pastel all the way down like so and I'm just going to keep doing that up over the sky there I can add in other colors I might decide I'd like a little bit of sort of a pinky color down here so if I can start adding in the pinky color and just pop that all the way across like that and then I might find a, a pale a purpley colour that's quite purple so I'm going to put that up, up up here and then I'm going to load that darker blue into it so just keep going like this uh, I've got that deeper blue I'll put another blue down here hmm, not sure about that one but let's try it And just keep going all the way along there those kind of strokes here comes my other blue get that one out and load that in as well it kind of helps on the sanded paper having put in that that background layer so now I'm just going to bring that one down into my purples and I'll have a layer it and then they start to mix the purples and the blues. You get a nice blending of colours and a real liveliness in your sky. And I can just keep going like that. And if I like this sky, I may well not even put in any clouds if I think it's lively enough. Uh, I can bring those little purpley pink shades a little bit down into that. The other blue. Just a few of them going along there. Now this is obviously much more time consuming than the usual skies I do. But that's not a bad thing. If you end up with a lovely, lovely sky. So I'm putting a bit more of that yellow back in all the way along there. And I'm just slanting it the same way. Now I could change the slant on that. I could make it come straight down. I could do it from the other side or I could cross hatch it. But I'm quite liking the way it's going. I'm taking this paler bluey sort of green and now I'm just going to put that all over the yellows there and they'll sort of mix together I've somehow got myself a bit of that deeper blue up there which I didn't really want but that's okay you can't you can always fix a mistake and then just coming down up into those purples as well and blending the purples down into the yellows and up into the blues using that paler blue okay. so I don't really want a purple sky but I just want the the vibrancy that's going to give to the sky to still be showing through now you can see I've got a very um, distinct mark there which I don't want and so I'm going to keep doing some blending and I'm going to take that one and blend it not so much. Fewer strokes, softer strokes. 
and that's just blending the darker sky in and then I'm going to take my darker sky colour and blend down into that again. So it's getting a really nice vibrancy going there. Uh, and just take this one. I'm just taking a few of those, bringing it down, trying to make them a little bit uneven so they don't make a straight line along there. And I had a little bit of this pinky colour earlier, mushroom pinky, and I'm just going to use that there to blend a little bit of the purples and blues together. And if you're finding it awkward to work like that, you can always just lay it on the side and do it that way. You don't have to work with it exactly in the way it's going to actually show up. So just keep doing those layers and I'll probably put in now even a couple more layers. Uh, I might take this darker purpley one which is sort of like that background colour in the sky. Just do a bit of blending there as well. And these are all very soft these sennelias. Lovely to work with but they are quite soft and you might find that I said I was just going to work with those but I do have these few that I had from sketching up so I might want to take one of the paler blue sticks out of there and give it a, an all over and this will unify the whole thing so I'm just going to put my little strokes going all the way up through the whole sky over each colour layer which will kind of help blend it in and the actual the harder pastels actually work really well to blend. So here I am just pushing that a little bit stronger, a little bit more force into it and up in here, laying it more on its side instead of just using the pit, the tip. And this is all helping to blend those layers together. So I get a more seamless So I might even take the whole side of it and run it all up like so. You can see I'm losing a lot of pastel there and I'll clean that dust up in a minute. This is just helping to... You do use, use quite a lot of pastel when you're using budget paper. You lose quite a lot of your pastel. That's okay because I collect mine in little little jars and then roll them into new pastels. So there we have a really interesting vibrant sky and I, I am not going to bother with any clouds for that one. What I want to do now before I continue is just clean up some of my mess there.